What up, y'all? <clears throat> Back again. Today I wanted to talk about something. I don't even know if I can get it out right. Um, but what I wanted to talk talk about today was um, how <clears throat> how special you are or how important you are to the narcissist. Um, and I don't think a lot of people talk on this. I, I'm kind of try and talk on it in uh so it may be a little bit more creative if i can get it out um but along the lines of um that if you're grade a supply if you were grade a supply which like i said you don't ever want to be grade a supply you always want to come off that but if you were grade a supply and you left the narcissist or you got discard from the narcissist we all know the narcissist is impulsive so you know, even if they, if you were discarded, doesn't mean that they know what the heck they're doing. Um, a lot of times that they, they feel like they can, uh, well, they've left and come back so many times that they always feel like they can get you back in, in their, uh, pridefulness, you know, it comes before the fall. Right. And that's to say that, you know, kind of at some point in time, you're not going to take them back. And that's when the major fall occurs just like anything else, um, pride before the fall, um, works in any prideful way. Um, it's a fact. And so in the case of you and the narcissist, this is where, um, it becomes a fact is when you won't take them back anymore. Cause you've either smartened up or had enough or came to the epiphany that nothing is ever going to change or that, um, I could do better by myself. I could fight better by my man. You don't need somebody. If you're going to be walking around the enemy all day, who needs them? You know, but sometimes we got to come to this realization. And I guess what I wanted to say is, is that when you, when, when you are out of their life, man, and, and, or they've had an impulsivity to go over or go off with some new supply. And then, you know, like I said, they may find out within, you know, two, three weeks that they ain't got nothing to give. And then, you know, they can't come back to you because why? They got they got that pridefulness, you know? So they'd rather just wait because a lot of times you hoovered yourself. You know, you were that low-hanging fruit. So they'll just be like, man, as much as they want you back and um, they need you back and they're enticed to get you back, they, they, you know, a lot of times they'll, 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 they'll try to play it off like they can handle it. And, um, you know, this is where they try to find somebody that at least fits your profile. Because when you, when you are uh, with the narcissist and you're the great A supply, you're usually the best. They, I mean, a lot of times what they do is they try to seek for the higher standard in their, each next new supply, as far as their great A, right? So, you know, if you are that true great A supply, you're probably going to be. There's a good chance that you could be the best they ever had. Okay, and that's um, part of the reason why they keep coming back to you. Um, because that's, they set their standard on their best last or else they're going to continue to try to get, get that person back. Right. Remember I spoke on, um, that you are the standard. And if you, if they can't get somebody equal to you or greater than you, they're going to be, um, forever stuck. Okay. And that's why at some point, you know, in time, if you refuse to take them back over and over again, this is where they will find um, a grade A supply that is the best they can find outside of you, knowing that they can't get you back. Um, but they would still try to take you back even with their new supply, of course, right? They will still, I'm saying they're not gonna give up. Um, but in, in, in your absence for so long and to the point to where you've refused them for so long, they have to start doing something. And so, if they can't get equal to you or greater, if you're the best, then they'll have to, that's when they start to convert a um, their, new, their new supply into a version of you. When they talk about like they have them dress like you, act like you, go to the same places as they, you took them, uh, this is when they start to mold the best thing they got. It ain't, it ain't you, okay, it ain't you but it's the best they can get. So they're like, well, let me just see if I can do my best to convert this individual into you. Um, and that's where that comes along. That construct comes along like that. Um, 
but you know i wanted to touch on a few things and uh you know it's kind of like uh it made me kind of think about christ for a minute because it's like you know like he, he, you know ultimately uh what happened to christ was like you know i mean in god's plan it was like he was definitely going to have to you know kind of be there was gonna have to be something that led to his crucifixion or and it's like so you know god is all knowing this chose um that it would have to be in his innocence because he's like all holy you know so it had to be it couldn't be like something sexual because that wouldn't be that would be something that would put a mark on him and he can't do that because he's um he's perfection but what happened was uh and is is that satan used the um a huge smear campaign through the pharisees pharisees if you think about it he used a big smear campaign and then he had the uh wolf in sheep's clothing the uh covert narcissist jews iscariot turn him in trade him in right remember they say that the narcissist they will um throw you under the bus they don't give a damn about you you know that kind of thing and um you know they are a construct of the enemy right if you even think about it you know like demons uh in genesis 6 uh four through six uh and if you read the book of enoch um this is where demons came from they came from the they're the, they're not fallen angels they're the disembodied spirits of the giants from genesis 6 they're called the nephilim and and so they uh you know i i believe that mythology is pre noah's ark flood uh reality but they turned mythology into you know this these fake book stories and stuff like that or you know this is what all these tribes you know made up they didn't make them up man this is like this is verbal history that you know kind of came down the line down the pike so to speak from generation to generation and i think to some degree it came through down verbally because historically speaking our history has been all tampered with but that's for another day but my point is is if you read the book is if you have read the book of enoch um you know it was kind of well it was kind of like fallen angels made it with human women that's where they got giants in the land disembodied spirits of the giants were the nephilim were that were the, the were demons okay so fallen angels are fallen angels but they were created by god and then they fell but they there was a group of fallen angels that had came down and saw uh, the women the women of men and saw them uh, and were fond of them and they were they took them as their wives and they are called the sons of god sons of god are always fallen angels angels adam and jesus is the son of god but also a son of god um we are sons of man daughters of man so that's where you 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 get that from and that's really why god flooded the earth out it wasn't because of great sin in the earth it was because everything was manipulated all flesh was sinful because it was all copulations from these fallen hosts that's why god actually had to even send the clean animals to noah but let's not get off topic my point was, was disembodied spirits of giants are demons not fallen angels and demons are copulations they were both uh, human mixed with fallen angel that's what giants were and um so they did have some attributes and they did have some spiritual power from their fathers the fallen angels mixed with um humanity the entanglement with humanity so they were intertwined into humanity that way now when they died the, the the giants died the giants um their spirits roamed the earth they weren't really allowed to go to hell unless they were sent there um but they also well, they couldn't go to heaven so they're dirty spirits and it talked in the book of enoch i mean i don't know uh, how much you can vet it, but it is in the Ethiopian canon. So it says something in the book of Jude and all real throughout the Bible, they use the book of Enoch and it's almost word for word. So um, that were the parts that they did use it. So it seems like the prophets may have had the book of Enoch in hand. 
But nevertheless, um, I think there's at least uh, some vetting of this book, quite a bit of it. But um, it talked about during that Genesis 6 time that they always had evil in their heart all the time, these giants and these Nephilim. And this is where they had taught um, man and woman all these different sinful deeds um, from weapons of war to, you know, wearing like, like sexual stuff and makeup and I, you know, I make up all, all kinds of stuff. Okay. Um, but my point is they were corrupt, like continually always. And, you know, that's the seed of the serpent. Um, you know, the seed of Satan, you know, these are the real true, this was like the true bloodline of the enemy, literally. Um, so this is what demons are and demons are in these individuals that you are dealing with. And so when you're dealing with individuals of this nature, they are always continually evil. I mean, you can't tell me one good deed that they've really done for you that hasn't been just cloaked under, you know, the coverage of goodness. And so, um... I guess uh, what I really want, what I wanted to get out of this too was the fact that you are the center of the fuel matrix. You are the fuel, the center of the fuel matrix of the narcissist. When the narcissist loses the center of the fuel matrix, the grade A supply, it makes them lose other forms of supply. And a lot of times they could become a hermit. They could, they could become like almost sick, man and end up like you, you may not see them and you may think that they're with other you know sources of supply getting it off and stuff but and that may happen for a couple weeks but at some point in time it's going to hit them like a ton of bricks that you ain't there no more and what they thought they could do without the presence of you they can't do it they can't do it but they continually try to do this because they never learn and they can never go inside they can never uh, introspect, right? And that's that's their uh, major problem with them. They never can look at themselves. And then they continually corrupt themselves. So now, now they really can't look at themselves because now they look so evil that they almost have a heart attack, man. They want to run from themselves. And so it just continually molds into a big ball of worse running, you know? I don't even know if that doesn't even sound right but I think you get the drip. And so when you're the center of the fuel or matrix of the narcissist, they uh, they didn't realize how important you were, but it's very easy for them to forget these things, but the, it comes back to reality real quick. And you know, when they can't find that grade A supply or that, that replacement that's as good as you or better, they're totally screwed because you know, Technically, when you look at the narcissist, they're actually searching for perfection, you know? And that's why they have, in a way, um, black and white thinking. There's no gray areas with them because you're all perfect and then you're all bad because they want perfection. And, um, and that's, you know, an interesting point in itself, but when you're the center of the fuel matrix, what they like and what they're missing now, and this is not that it's good and it's not where you want to be, but the fact of the matter is we're just kind of defining things and talking about things. And yeah, maybe I'd be jumping from top to topic right here, but I still want to get these points out. Whether they mesh together or not, I think that you can follow me. Um, but I think a lot of times what the, the narcissist, that where they get a lot of supply and fuel from you um, that, I, that I don't think that you realize is that when they have an, a grade A supply, they, they, they love a huge major supply for them is for them to cheat on you. They cheat all the time. And for them to be able to cheat on you and get over on you and have secrets um, and, and, and knowing that they're playing you and you accepting it and taking it, I mean, this, this gave them huge amounts of supply. They blame shift on you, all that stuff, that projection, all that stuff. Now, 
they're either like a hermit, they're sick, they want to commit suicide, they might, you know, um, they'll be threatening everybody, and uh, they'll they'll be, uh, you know, going at everybody. They'll be angry, boy. They're angry. It's like angry animals, right? You were the one that actually brought them down from their uh, animalistic beast system, beast mode. You took them from being an animal to actually being part of humanity. Because when you're grade A supply, you supply for them so well that you actually make them look human and operate correctly for a while. All they're doing all this crap in the background. But... Um, you know, the other thing is, is the narcissist, man, you never can have any kind of enjoyment with them. They're like the complete buzzkill. They're the complete, like, uh, destruction of any kind of joy in your life. You know, at some point, you know, you, you, you do quit looking forward to, and headed to, ahead to the future. You know, part of your sick, you feeling sick all the time and stuff and feeling depressed and stuff is because you have nothing to look forward to. Because if you ever have a cool, a cool holiday to look forward to, you know the narcissist is going to ruin it. It's like they're the they're the policeman for Satan, so that you know all happiness has to be destroyed, man. You know it's like, uh, you know, and and part of it is because they have to have you lower than them, or else you're a huge threat to them. And then if you're above them, you know, in any kind of, in any kind of stature, whether it be happiness, financial, and it's not like you're saying I'm above you. It's just, that's how they look at you. Then they have to take you down because you're a threat. So if you're happy, they got to make you unhappy because they're, they're, they're never happy. So they have to block that out of you. thing they hate about us is we could self-regulate you know and we can we can heal we can we can come back we always come back for for more like we, we got fight in us you know but we got we got a uh, soul a beautiful thing about us is we have we have a, a fighting soul and for a lot of us I hope to say that we're gonna we're waking up and we're going to walk away from this folly. We're going to turn from it. We're going to do an, what would they say in the military, uh, an about face, right? You turn the opposite way and you march the opposite way. And that's what repentance is. You know, the road to repentance is, is to do an about face, which is when you're marching in the direction, you know, when they stop and they make a, 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 a specific turn the opposite way in a march and and in their sternness they walk the opposite way they march the opposite way that is what true repentance is it's to turn with sternness and to march in the opposite direction say i'm not going to do this anymore and so I don't really know what my message is today, but it's a culmination of that you are the center of the fuel matrix when you're grade A supply. And when you walk away from the narcissist, they may have other, they have other sources of supply, but they're gonna lose some of them because they don't care about them and then they're going to neglect them because they're trying to get you. They don't know what to do, but they can't really literally come back to you because they have too much pride. So they're gonna hang out for a while. And then you're not gonna come back because this is the last time that you've given them. You had enough. So then what's gonna happen is, is now what, what's gonna happen is, is you want them to give you a lot of time away because you're healing. You don't want them to come back. You don't wanna talk to them. It gives you time to heal that trauma bond longer. You want the longest amount of time you can get away from them and heal because they're gonna come at you and you wanna be strong. You want to be strong. You want to be able to be able to withstand, you know, the, the enemy. And that's why sometimes you just want to not talk to them, but you want to do it peacefully if you can. You just kind of want to drift off into the wallpaper. 
when you lead the narcissist in the beginning. You, you don't want to fight with them. You don't want to try to stimulate them. You don't want to try to get them to see you and how well you're doing. No, that's, that's, that's what you don't want to do. What you want to do is just hide out and heal because they're coming back and you want to be strong and be able to withstand them. Those Hoovers, those Hoovers are coming, man. They're coming, baby. They're coming. And you got to be able to withstand it. When you're sitting out there trying to turn Narcissus on and trying to get them to look at you and all that stuff, you don't want that, man. And you, you don't want to cuss them out. You don't want to get angry with them. You just want to drift off, man. You want to drift off into the wallpaper. You want to just drift off into the scenery. You, you don't you, you don't want to you don't want to stimulate them you don't want to talk to them but you don't want to even start them up in an argument or anything you want them to enjoy as much supply out there as they can find because you don't want them kind of coming back you want to get time away the longer time you're away the better you heal and it's the opposite between you and them and you may be sidetracked but by, by some of your heartbreaking stuff but get this know this you remember, i told you about the 14 benefits you get better the longer you're away from them. From day one, you start getting your energy back. What happens to them? They start getting their energy drained because they're the opposite of you. You and them are on two different spec sides of the spectrum. It's like Christ and Satan. You know, they're two different sides of the spectrum. When you're together with the enemy, the enemy is sucking you dry. They're strengthening that trauma bond. But that from day one, the longer you stay away from them, your energy increases, your health increases, your mind clarity comes back, your creativity, your open doors to God's, you know, the seed of God, you through your prayer life. And 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 the opposite's happening for them. Maybe not the, the the first week or so, but they think that they can they can handle life without you, and they can't. They can't. Their only success is all the stuff that they've sucked off you. You know. But they don't get it. They're never going to get it, and you don't want them. Who wants that? Who wants them? They're, you're begging to get the most corrupt individual that, that almost in the world, man, back in your life. So they can continually knock you down and destroy you? What the hell are you thinking? You gotta wake up, man, because, you know, this is your soul. And this is where things get serious, man. You have opportunity right now. And it may look bad to you right now in your mind, your heart, and, you know, maybe in your finances and stuff, but in a year, things will be turned around. And whatever the enemy stole from you, you know, God's going to give back to you probably 10, 20, 100 fold. But you got to walk by faith, not by sight. And, uh, determine that you're going to get through this. And you will. So uh, stand tall. Soldier up. Peace out. Love y'all. Like, subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Be safe. Love y'all. Bye.